gonna go peacefully down the road. Power will die and power will love. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loves on the cross. Welcome again to Jesus is Ask the Ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales, and I'm, I'm telling y'all, we've been having a glorious time in the Word teaching on trading places with Him. And um, so make sure you tell your friends. I'm going to uh, start doing part three this week. Um, it's, it's just astounding the revelation that, that uh, if, if we're going to go on in the Lord, then we're going to have to get a greater revelation of who Christ is and what Christ did on that cross. Now, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Uh, For God hath made him, see God is he, made Jesus to be seen for us who knew no sin. You know, one of one of the greatest revelations, and I'm not talking about you read this in the Bible and and you know you just say, Well, I believe the Lord had no sin. But 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 deeper in that is you run to him about everything. You you trust him to show you how to not sin. You trust the Lord Jesus to show you how to not live the way that you used to live, or to not live the way that, that you just got through living. I remember uh, and, and I cursed uh, for several months after I got saved and I just said a bad word. I got around some people I was witnessing to and I got to listening to them and that word came out of my mouth and I, I hit my mouth and said, oh, forgive me, Lord, I'm a Christian. I don't talk like that. And because um, my soul hadn't been saved yet. And um and so I asked the Lord Jesus to forgive me. And, and he did. One time, just asked one time and he forgave me. Well, several, two months later, I, I remember saying the same word again. I scales? You done? Yeah. See, it's no way that, that Jesus and God expecting us to be perfect until he perfects us and teaches us. So, but the second time, I, I, I didn't just ask the Lord to forgive me. I, I pray that people get a hold of this. God's people get a hold of this. But I asked the Lord to change me. Well, I never do that again. I've never, I've never done that since. Now, I could have done that the first time and never had the second time. And, and, and I, but but I, I, I saw that, and, and I pray that you'll see a lot of times asking God to forgive you don't change you. That's just you receiving that he forgives you of that. But but it takes a trust in Christ Jesus that he never seen to believe that he can teach you and I how to walk in his life, in his obedience, the same way. So the Bible said, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for God had made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so in Christ Jesus is the obedience of Jesus Christ. It's it's what it's what Jesus lived, saints. I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all, he's the only one that ever obeyed all of God's law perfectly, all the requirements of the law. Jesus obeyed it to the teeth. And therefore, then our lives and our obedience should be based on our faith in Christ, uh, uh, trusting in him that, that, that what was in him will work in us. Amen. Uh, he swapped places. He traded places with us. And you can see this all through the scriptures. Here is uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 19. For by the obedience of one, uh, in verse 19, for if by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Righteousness 
is something that you and I can never earn. We can never work for it uh, the same way with forgiveness. We, we can't work for that. And so uh, we have to understand that this is something that the Lord gives to us as a gift. But we have a responsibility to walk in the righteousness. And the way you walk in, in righteousness, in right standing with him, is you do what the Lord Jesus tell you to do. And then you begin to see uh, that, you know, he became poor, <laughs> excuse me, so you can become rich. And he swapped places with you. And so the, the, the real key to having real success as a Christian is spending time with the Lord in prayer and in the word where he can speak to us. That's where your greatest victories will be from him. It's, it's him, him ministering to you, him, him speaking to you. And so we should spend more time instead of asking God for stuff of yielding ourselves, humbling ourselves before him. Well, that he can give us more and more grace. So, so by one man disobedience, you know, people don't have a problem with that. You know, waking up every morning and being a sinner. But you can get in a habit of waking up every morning living in the righteousness of God through the obedience of Jesus Christ. His obedience. It's the reason we can go to God in Jesus' name. His obedience it's the reason that that we can receive uh, grace from God by faith. Um, his obedience is the reason that that we can have his peace every day. And I want to begin to teach y'all more about trading places with him. That you let you let your sins, what you've done wrong, fall on Jesus on the cross. This. Just see God laying everything you've done wrong, doing, or ever will do. He laid them on Jesus on the cross. And then he want to impute to you because most people, they just stop right there and say, well, I'm forgiven. But you never become nothing. And so it ain't enough for you to just be forgiven and you don't become something. See, the Lord wants you forgiven and become a new creature and live that new creature out every day. And so... In order for us to live that out, there, there's, there's two things got to happen. Let's, let's go look at these um, in uh, John 14, verse 27. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. One translation said, uh, I give you a uh, peace as a gift. And uh, my peace, peace I leave with you, <clears throat> my peace I give you. Not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Many times we, we can see here, and I want you to really get this today. Um, two things I want to really expound on in, in trading places with Jesus. The first thing is, is that peace I leave with you, or the peace that he's leaving with us, is a piece of gift. It's a gift. And then Jesus says, my peace. Now get that. My peace I give unto you. <clears throat> now, what's he doing? He's swapping places. He's giving us something that he walked in perfect from God. So my peace. So he's trading with you the troubles, fears, worries, anxieties and all the cares that's in this world. Jesus want to trade places with you where you receive his life and don't walk in what this world is trying to give you. So <clears throat> my peace I give you, not as the world give unto you. I believe this is one of the most misunderstood um, and wrongly taught revelation. Of, of that, that what God did in Jesus, now listen carefully to this, and what God did with Moses are two different dispensations. 
and people continue uh, 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 to want to uh, teach Malachi to the Christian by, you know, if you if you don't tab your curse, if you don't give off your curse to uh, really put pressure on people to give. And um, but but really, Christians are not under that. And the reason why is in 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 Christ Jesus, where grace is, it always has to be God giving you something, and then you go live something. It's just like Abraham was under grace. And, and Abraham is a picture of God's love. God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make you a blessing. And so the first part is, Abraham, I'm going to love you. And then I'm going to make you to go love. Because, because a God never will forgive us and not want us to go forgive others. He, he will never prosper you and not want you to go live that prosperity to others. God always, if God gives you joy, it's so your joy can go and affect other people. When God gives us his peace, it's so our peace can go and affect other people. So God will never give us something that he don't want us to go live. Amen. It'd be a blessing to others. And so what the law said was, listen, if you will do all this, I'll bless you. If you will keep all my commandments and do everything that I ask you to do, <clears throat> then I, I'll bless you. But in grace, God wants to come and love you first. And so you can see here that Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. So every day in prayer, every day at work, every day in whatever you're doing, you need to let Jesus give you something. Anytime that you are troubled with problems, he's not giving you nothing. When Jesus gives you his peace, then you won't be troubled with problems anymore. Whenever you know you don't have enough money, you need to let Jesus be your, uh, uh, God be your provider. And so many times we, we don't swap places with him. Most people, I'm telling you, 99% of people I meet, and I mean 99, they go to church, they serve the Lord. They still have a, a mentality of work. A lot of people still in Jesus and church have a mentality of works. They're, they're trying to earn it. They're trying to do stuff to, to be righteous, to be right. Um, they're trying to earn Instead of living in what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Well, Pascal, how, how do you live in that? You have to spend time with the Lord and, and let him change you and let him give you and, and let him teach you. what's. I'm going to show you in this message uh, exactly what the Lord wants you to do. But you have to see this first, uh, that Jesus has to give you uh, every day. Any time, any struggles, any situation come up, immediately I know that Jesus needs to give me something. Therefore, Jesus said, come unto me. All you, Matthew 11, uh, 28, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Now, here it is, here it is. Here it is. Listen, listen to these words. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden about everything. Now, watch it. Watch what Jesus said. I will give you rest. See, see, you see, when you have troubles, he's got to give you something. When you are screwed up, when you keep struggling in this and you talk too much and you 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 you, you worry too much, you you stress too much, you you just are always broke, you're always struggling with money and issues and stuff. Come right now. Dog didn't do right, and and you 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 didn't you broke your nail, and oh Lord Jesus, your hair ain't working right. I, I mean, you could just come up with all kind of stuff. Well, here, here's what has to happen: Jesus Christ has to give you rest. He has to give you peace. He has to give you answer. God made Jesus to be wisdom for us. God made Jesus to be righteousness for us. 
God made Jesus because Jesus got everything that God had. Therefore, we must live in obedience to faith in Jesus so Jesus can impart this to us. He can trade places with us and give and take on him on the cross what we did wrong and then take on us everything Jesus did right. Now listen to this. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. We're we teaching on trading places with him. And Jesus said, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke. Jesus said, I'll give you rest. Now watch what he's saying. Take my yoke up on you. Oh, what's he doing? Trading places with you. He said, take his yoke on you. So he's, he's completely... The, the things that, that, that people carry every day and the worries and stresses and the, the fears and the troubles and, and the, the problems and the circumstances and the concerns. He's telling you to take his yoke. Take, take on you what God gave him. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Now, Pascal, how do I take on me the yoke of Jesus. You ready? You have to learn of him. You got to watch how he did it. And you, you see this all through, through the scriptures in the New Testament. How he did it. How he did it. He, 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 he trusted the father. He, he only spoke what he heard God say. He only did what he saw the father do. He, he became a servant to, to, to obedience. He, he didn't tell God what he wanted. Jesus didn't give interest to his own thoughts. People give interest to their own thoughts all the time. They really think what they think and what they feel really means something. And they really don't. I don't give interest to my own thoughts. I don't give interest to what I feel. I don't give interest to emotions and feelings that are out of line with the word of God. I don't give interest to them. And, and most, a lot of people go to church, they just live in what they feel every day. It's the same. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Get, get this, get this. And learn of me. Oh, I am meek and low. Look, look, look. look he's, here he is. Here he is. He's starting to tell you now about him. Oh, I am meek and lowly. In heart. Look, look how he is. Look how he is. He's trying to get you to, to see how he is, to learn of him so that you can receive from him. He's saying you, look, I'm meek and lowly in heart. I'm not like you. I, I, I'm not trying to hold back the blessings of God from you. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And Jesus said, you will find rest to your soul. See, how he going to swap places with you? He's going to take on him on the cross what you've done wrong. He's, he's going to show you how to overcome this world. Now, listen carefully now. So, Jesus said in verse 29, for my yoke is easy. See, what's he doing? He's telling you about him. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, he's telling you about him. Why? So you can trade places with him. So you can receive from Jesus. And saying this is what I have lived since June 30th, 1988. I, I'm telling y'all, I have, I have sought the Lord every day of my walk with the Lord. And, 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 and I, I always run to him with every problem. Because your mind is going to be bombarded and troubled. And I remember as a baby Christian, I'm telling you, I had to fight some days all day long resisting thoughts. They just were like a machine gun. I, I hadn't had that happen uh, in 15, 16, 17 years. And so as you renew your mind and you walk in obedience, that, that gets lesser and lesser. And the reason why it don't get lesser, the reason why people keep getting so many attacks from the devil is because you ain't Put yourself in a position where Jesus can trade places with you. And you can sit around and enjoy his peace all day. All day long. Hallelujah. Now, 
Let, let's get ready. Let me get ready to try to wrap this up. But I, uh, let me read this verse in John. Uh, I'm sorry, Matthew five. The Lord just put this on my heart. Uh, Matthew five seventeen. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And this is this is real confusing to people. Because you have to look up the word fulfill as I look back in my uh, a Greek and, and, and lexical Bible. But the word fulfilled is uh, when Jesus said he came not to destroy the law of the prophets. He didn't. See, it's a, it's a difference when Jesus fulfilled the types and prophecies that the prophets of old prophesied about him. And let me, let me tell you something. They never ever prophesied what he was going to reveal. See, and so you have to go read the Gospels and you have to see how Jesus walked and you have to see what Jesus said and you have to see what Jesus did on the cross to, 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 to get revelation to live in him. You, you can't live in Jesus from the Old Testament because you have to have how he loved you on the cross. And Jesus had never died on the cross in the Old Testament. So there was, there was, we were in this world with no hope and without God. But now through the blood of Jesus, we've been made not by the blood of Jesus Christ. So there's nothing that, 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 that we had a part of God before the blood of Jesus. There was no love. And he knocked the wall of the Jew and the Gentile. And that wall of petition, Jesus knocked all that down and made one new man. So making peace, Ephesians 2, 12 through 14. So God done made peace by getting rid of everything and making him a new man in Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Uh, Jesus came not only to fulfill the types and prophecies, and not only that, but by his actions and suffering, but also to perform and to enforce and explain it for uh, in his own person and to enforce and explain fully by his teaching, his doctrine. Thus he has fully satisfied the requirements of the law. What, what was, how did Jesus, Pastor Scales, fulfill all the laws of God? Well, it's in John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So, so Jesus kept something that kept him in the Father's love, which is the Holy Spirit. So listen carefully to this. That, that Jesus said in verse 10, John 15, 10, if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments and abided in his love. And so what Jesus kept was as the father loved him, he had faith in the father's love and he lived what the father said. He, he depended on the father. He, all his dependency was on what the father say I say, what I see the father do I do. That, that's how we got to do Jesus. And you're not going to do that if you ain't going to spend no time with him. Now let's close in Hebrews 12, 14. Uh, the writer said, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And so <clears throat> this right here, my brothers and sisters, you that are watching the broadcast, is the key to, to getting free and living free. Number one, you must follow peace. What, what, what God wants us to do is to follow peace. Letting Jesus Christ give us something. It's the key. If every time you, you, you sin, you need to let Jesus give you forgiveness. Every time you come short, you need, you need wisdom. You need guidance. You don't know how to make the money come in. You, you need to, to, to let the Lord teach you how to trust him. And so follow peace by letting Jesus give you something. And holiness is is you letting Jesus tell you what to do. Holiness is Jesus telling you what to do and you do it. Now, you're going to see the Lord. 
you're going to see the Lord. And when you don't follow peace and let Jesus give you his love, his forgiveness, so you can give that to others, and, and you don't do what Jesus say, which is holiness, then you're not going to see the Lord in your right now in your situation. And really, that's why many people are not seeing the Lord right now. But you can. If you'll follow peace, let Jesus give you something. And then holiness, which is letting Jesus tell you how to live and what to do every day. And you do it. And you will see the Lord. Amen. Well, I want to make available to you part three. Trade in places with him. On the screen is our address. Amen. You can go to our web page. And use your credit card, uh, Visa, MasterCard, Discover. Um, and you can go to robertscalesministries.org. Or you can write us. Now, this, this right here is um, uh, $30. Amen. But if you order all three of them, I'll let you have all three of them for $75. That's part one, part two, and part three. And so order these now if you'd like to mail it to us. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus is Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And also, just ask me, I'll throw you a free copy of my book, God's Grace Explained. And I know these will tremendously bless you. The Lord, this I, I was going to just do one series, and the Spirit of the Lord had me to do many more. The reason why, saints, is you need to hear this over and over and over and you need the Lord to speak to you when you live a life of the Lord giving you and you do what Jesus say every day which is holiness that'll cause you to always see the Lord in every area in your life so order them today amen we'll get them right out to you also I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church a church that's alive it's worth the drive and if God's speaking to you to come our service times on the screen uh, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, Sunday school, 10 o'clock, regular service, and also um, Thursday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss these services. They will tremendously bless you. We're in Watertown, Tennessee, 332 West Main Street. Come out and visit us. We know you'll be tremendously blessed. If you're hungry for the word, if you're bound, hurting, lost, or uh, you, you, you really need a touch from God, come. You will see, you will experience the glory and presence of God like never before. So I look forward to seeing you. I want to thank my partners and friends. Thank you so much for your financial support. You can go online and donate uh, to robertscaleministries.org. Thank you for helping us and writing us. Let us know how to broadcast as being a blessing to you. We're on Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. And be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus as I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember now, as Jesus loved you on the cross, go live that to everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.